everyone. Welcome back to another Sunday service. At this time, let's pray to prepare our hearts for worship. Let's pray that God will open our hearts and ears, our eyes, to His wonders. Father God, you are worthy of all our praise. You are worthy of all the glory. So let our lives be filled with actions that seek your glory and seek your truth. Help us to be righteous. Help us to be holy, just like you are. Forever, oh. 
holy God. Come and worship the holy God. Who else could rescue me? Who else could rescue me from my failing? Who else would offer his only son? Who else invites me to call him Father? Only a holy God. Only my holy God. So come behold. Come and behold him. The one and the only. Cry out, sing holy, forever a holy God. Come and worship the holy God. Come and behold, come and behold him, the one and the only. Cry out, sing holy. Forever a holy God, come and worship the holy God. Sing, there's a grace. There's a grace when the heart is under fire. Another way when the walls are closing in. And when I look at the space between where I used to be and this reckoning, I know I will never be. Was another in the fire standing next to me. There was another in the waters holding back the seas. And should I ever need reminding of how I've been set free? There is a cross that bears the burden when another died for me. There is another in the fire See all my dead left for dead All my dead left for dead beneath the waters I'm no longer a slave to my sin anymore Should I fall in the space between what remains of me and this reckoning? Either way, I won't bow to the things of this world. And I know I will never be alone. There is another in the fire standing next to me. There is another in Nobody, now that power lives in me. There is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another in the fire. Oh, there is another. To him, I can see the Lord in the heavens as the space between where it's in. I can feel the ground shake beneath us 
past the prison walls came in. Nothing stands between us. Nothing stands between us. See, there is no other name. There is no other name but the name that is Jesus. He who was and still is and will be through it all. So come on, me in the space between all the things unseen and this reckoning. And I know I will never be alone. And I know. Should I ever need reminding? How could you be to me? I count the joy and come every battle. Cause I know that's where you'll be. And I can see, and I can see the light in the darkness. As the darkness bows to him, I can hear the roar in the heavens. As the space between winds. was lost I once was lost in darkest night yet thought I knew the way the sin that promised joy in life had led me to the grave I had no hope that you would own a to your will and if you had not loved me first I would refuse you still but as I ran but as I ran my hell bound ring Different to the cause you were upon my helpless thing and led me to the cross and I beheld God's love display you suffered in my place you bore the wrath reserved for me now all I know is great. See, hallelujah, hallelujah. All I have is Christ. Hallelujah. 
Without you, we have nothing. But with you, we have everything, oh God. So help us to remember that in all our fires, past, present, future, that you are there with us. For we cannot save ourselves, but only through you, Jesus Christ, we are saved. So let us have this faith that we are made new through you, that our past does not define us, but it is in you, Jesus, that we have our identity. Yes, God, keep that truth with us, O God, because it is only through your strength that we can follow your commands. Let's say the Apostles' Creed together. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell, and on the third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From there he shall come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and life everlasting. Amen. Now Pastor Pablo will be coming up to speak. All right, good morning or good afternoon whenever you're going to watch this uh, service. Welcome. Thank you. Thank you for joining us. And uh, you are watching our youth, youth service, uh, Fairfax Korean Church Youth Service. So God bless you all, wherever you are, whatever is going on in your life. Uh, we just want to encourage you and just want to let you know that God loves you very much. And he is with you. He is faithful. He is near, and he is your God and our God. So that's what that's what why we why we're here this morning. Why we're doing this is because we just want to be the helpers of your joy. We want your joy to be complete, to be full in Christ. Because 
uh, these are not easy days for some of us and you know some of some of us are very busy some are anxious and stressful so therefore this is what why this is why we this is why we do it not because we have achieved something or because we are you know we are so wise and you know you know so spiritual we are walking in this path humbly trusting god and praying for you all okay so praise the lord praise the lord lord we thank you thank you so much let's just let's just worship the lord let's just glorify and praise him with our our mouth with our heart and just be just be focused and and restful in his presence thank you god thank you that you are our god you're our father and thank you we can come to you through jesus through jesus christ our lord and savior our redeemer in one spirit thank you we've been baptized by the, by one spirit into one body and thank you that we are members of one one of another we are one body and we as a body of christ we are looking to you to be fed to be nourished to be if need to be convicted and corrected lord by your spirit we are children lord and we are we need to hear from you we need to be led by you in in this life and thank you that we have everything needed for life and godliness through your promises through your glory in our lives we thank you for that in jesus name we pray touch and anoint and fill us with your spirit this morning amen amen wow praise the lord god is good just you know wherever you are if you want to just say it shout to your yourself or to your like to your neighbor wherever you are just say like god is good he is good and he is here and he is faithful so praise the lord last last uh, uh where, where was yesterday we had a wonderful an online first ever online retreat for our youth group and we are just so thankful we've had a time of worship and games and a fellowship in small groups and praying it was so good we had uh, myself pastor terry uh kim and uh, pastor jane from california from san francisco from joining us on that online retreat it was super awesome really really great and we're, I'm, I'm looking forward if you could could kind of uh, do it again sometime and let's be praying about it because we need to see each other's each other faces we need to be reminded of our true identity that we we belong we belong to him and and hearing the word of god in that kind of fellowship was really so good so the thing that we had and, and i just want to do a short recap from what what we we've spoken last uh, last night last after, afternoon and morning we the thing was god's presence in the midst of our storm god's presence in the midst of our storm and it seems like we have a, some type of storm going on in this world which is not fun uh which is kind of uh, even you know very stressful for some people even if you are not you know really like you're not on the verge of dying or you know being you know sick or something you still are thinking about things which are go going on in the world and I, I i think you know as we yesterday we were fellowship i think the greatest storms that are actually happening is right here this is the storm that is going on the things which are going there like they've been going like believe me or not like for centuries for thousands of years and believe me there were worse times than these times in our history oh boy there were worse times there were world wars going on you know people dying by thousands and millions of people dying gosh we are like we are you know we're, we're i think in better shape than we ever even think and the real storm is happening is right here in our mind when our focus is distracted from the lord from his presence from him from his promises from, from his sure word of promise this is when when we are distracted this storm is happening and we need to realize the spiritual nature of the storm as, and as yesterday we were discussing and pastor jane was talking about the story of the uh, of jesus uh, being in, with disciples in in the midst of the storm in mark 4 and that uh, 
you know, he was just resting there in the boat and, the, and, the, and that storm was there and he stood up against that storm and he spoke against that storm. He said, it's quiet, be still. And most theologians believe that the, 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 that storm was not just an, an ordinary storm, like that, that those uh, fishermen would face. They were really scared of that storm. And the reason of that storm is because there was a demonic force there that was standing behind that, that storm. Because in chapter 5 of Mark 5, there was a, an encounter that Jesus had with a demon-possessed man. And there was a legion of demons sitting in that man. And nobody could help him. And when Jesus appeared, he delivered that man. And, you know, like tons of demons went into those, uh, how do you call those things? Pigs, right? Pigs. 2,000 pigs died on that day. Wow, some, some people missed some barbecue, you know. They, they were like, you know, were hoping to have a barbecue. And like 2,000 pigs died. Gosh. Somebody lost their business. Can you believe like 2,000 pigs? I mean, these men, you know, whoever they were, those shepherds, they were really angry at Jesus because they lost their business. And demons were behind it. And, and, uh, and theologians believe the reason for that storm was because demons didn't want Jesus to get to that other side that Jesus told the disciples about. And, they, and demons tried to stop through that storm. They tried to stop Jesus from coming and deliver that man. Because once that man was saved and, and, and healed, he went and preached the gospel to those, to, in those places because apparently those people didn't want Jesus to go. But this man, when he was changed, he went there and he preached the gospel. So what, 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 what would we like to say to this morning is that a lot of those storms, we may not even be aware and realize that and may initially not see that they're, uh, they're spiritual in their nature. And, I mean, this global pandemic and the, the global fear that is going on, I believe me, my friends, this is, this is not just an ordinary storm. This is not just human life. The, behind it, there are spiritual powers that are trying to put people like in prison cell of their soul and keep them there in fear and not, them, and not le letting them come to the Lord in humility. Thankfully, I, I believe there are people that are still coming to Jesus through these times because they're desperate. And this, these times of fear and that storm is really motivating people to think about their purpose. But some people don't find it. And... And would, would you like agree with me? I hope you would. You know, we are by nature, if we are not motivated, if we are not put on, in, like on a crisis, we are really like we, would, like, we would be complacent. We would not move a, thing, a finger unless we would just be placed in a place where we need to be like really, really motivated. I, I love the meme when I, when I, once I saw like a biker like a, 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 you know, a guy on a bicycle and behind him like a huge bear is running and the, and, and the mama says if you cannot find motivation motivation will find you so this huge bear is, is running like is like running behind this bicyclist and believe me this guy he is running for his life he is not gonna like hug and embrace this 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 animal because this animal is going to eat him up and this is what happens with most people we we fail to see the seriousness of our situation unless it becomes so serious we kind of chill out we go like like we sail on on a, on a good breeze and we don't realize that there might come a, a time where there will be a storm and, and that you need to be prepared like you need to be stable in your heart and if you are not you will you will be like you know you'll go you, you may go crazy you may you may freak out because the storms the storm may may court may catch you off guard and we as spiritual beings we need to realize that we need to be like sensitive we need to be un un understanding what's going in the world and the spiritual nature of our lives and the world around us 
And because God has made us in a specific way, he made us to be body, soul, and spirit. Or we could go in the reverse, actually. Spirit, soul, and body. This is how we made. We are, man is a spirit that has a soul that lives in a body. And God made man so that man would contain the spirit of God. God has left in that in us that part that really special part in us that would connect to God and that we are we, we, in the Bible we are called the vessels we were made to be the vessels of God we were like containers of God that God would fill us and we would be one with him and that spirit is the spirit of love that spirit of freedom that spirit is spirit of salvation it's not you know god is not forcing anyone to you know to to believe in him but that spirit is drawing and that and that spirit wants to be like abiding in every single individual and unlike all of us who have received the spirit of god we know how it feels we know how it feels to be in peace how to be in love with god how to have a genuine joy like we have experienced that the presence of God also we know the other spirit the spirit of fear the spirit of worry the spirit of resentment maybe or being offended we know how it feels it feels ugly it feels bad and you know the, the and, and and the cares of this life they're like they're designed you know the the enemy of God is this has designed those things to make our soul so small and to look and so that all those worries would look so big and that our God would look so small isn't it amazing you know one day I could be like hey hallelujah I can be praising God and then just something hits me and I see like wow God where are you hey where are you God you just he just went out the window <laughs> God is gone where is it like it's because we as, as human beings we don't realize that you know the spiritual world is 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 interested in us information that we listen to information it just it comes in our ears and our eyes and it just it grabs our attention don't we like don't we like sometimes i mean we are like on social media on the internet and yesterday pastor terry was just kind of giving us a little like how do you say it he was just rubbing our feathers or whatever he was saying you know guys are you like spending time in in the word are you are you like really like listening to god or all are almost of, a lot of your time you're just on media and internet and don't we like feel like when we go in that direction like we come out of it and we feel like wow what just happened to me i was just so like i was just so gone there my mind was just somewhere else and actually i don't feel really sa satisfied and happy is because the world is interested in our spirit and our soul this the, the 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 you know the kingdom of darkness wants our attention because the spirit wants a place you know the the demons the 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 devil they want a place i mean they may not like live in a believer they cannot possess a believer but they sure want you know the mind to be busy with stuff which is is not going to be edifying which is not going to fill your heart with peace of god which will not give you desire to like to worship god and be his in being in fellowship wow thank you daniel we love you you're amazing wow this boy is amazing <laughs> god bless him so what are we saying that that uh demonic spiritual world is is trying to find a room in our life that's why it's in Ephesians 4.29, it says, Don't give place. Don't give him a sphere of influence in your life. Don't give a place to the devil. Don't give it to him. Because he is looking for a place where he can bring his ideas, where he can, he can bring his information, which is going to be just distracting us from the Lord. And it may be, it can be like, I think this is even more like 
even in, in more important these days for us to guard our hearts from, from, uh, from those spirits. And there is a very interesting passage. Uh, we, we, will not be, we will not be speaking long. Uh, in Luke 11, there is a, there is a passage there. Let, let's just open it. I, can, I mean, these are Jesus, really very words of Jesus, where he explained how the spiritual world operates. And uh, Luke 11, chapter 11, verse 24. When a demon is cast out of a person, just imagine, there is a demon that is a spirit. It goes to wander in the waterless realms of searching for rest. But finding no place to rest, it says, I will go back to the body of the one I left. When it returns, it finds the person like a house that has been swept clean and made tidy, but is empty. Then it goes and enlists seven more demons, more evil than itself, and they all enter and possess the person, leaving that one with a much worse fate than before. Wow. So, Jesus is describing a person who has been delivered from a demon. And being delivered from a demon does not like mean that this person belongs to Christ now. It's because there is still room, there is a choice for a person to make to invite Christ in their life. God can you know, cast a demon, but someone needs to voluntarily invite Christ in their life. And it says that those, those, the demon is looking for a place, for a, for a place of rest, because apparently they need a place of rest. And when he comes back in this story and he finds that place is empty. This is a very interesting, this is the most important point today. Are you empty? If you feel empty, it's like this is a, this is a perfect place for influence of a, for, by spiritual world. I don't, I don't want to scare you guys. I don't want like, to scare you like, and picture a horrible story. But this is a true reality. That if our minds are empty, if our emotions are empty, if our, if, if our choices are empty, if we are not, we don't have a purpose, we don't have a motivation, something will come up. We will be motivated by the kingdom, which is not, is not going like, to bring us closer to in fellowship in the presence of God. So this is... This is, uh, I mean, these are our daily choices. We are, we are living day by day. And God is, is, is just really kind of drawing us, showing us examples. And, and it's like he's just drawing us, you know, trying to teach us wisdom. Just give us wisdom. And I'm praying, and, and you can also pray, James 1.5, it says, whoever lacks wisdom, ask of God ask of God because you and I we need wisdom we need divine wisdom these days and it says that we would ask in faith without wavering ask God for wisdom expect God to give you wisdom and then you just simply in humility take the wisdom that you have here in his word take a counsel take a take a friend and say God just just pray with me and I need wisdom. I need wisdom. Every day I need wisdom. Because if I don't take God's wisdom, there will come another wisdom. Another wisdom. In James 3, it says there is an earthly wisdom. And that wisdom is attractive. That wisdom, you know, many people think the way they think. And, and, and we can be just distracted in the wisdom of the world. So let's just be aware I want to just say this, just let's be aware, you know, there is a spiritual world, we are spiritual beings, we are, in this world, we are children of God, and spiritual world is interested in us, it is interested when we are empty, to fill us, so that's why it says in Ephesians 5.18, be you filled with the Holy Spirit, 
you need to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And we can be filled by asking, Lord, fill us with your Holy Spirit. Fill us with the thoughts of Jesus Christ. Give us the mind of Jesus Christ to think the way he thinks in this world. Because this is how we're going to see him move. Is that we, we believe that He is here. He, his presence is here. He has not changed. And He will, you know, you will like, if you just ask and you wait. Oh God. God in the morning, He will visit you in the morning. He will, like, He, he will show Himself to you in the evening. If you just bring that emptiness to Him. Don't try to fill that emptiness just with just only worldly things. Bring it to Him. Bring your emptiness to Him. And let the Lord fill your emptiness. He will fill it with confidence. He will fill it with faith. He will fill it with hope. <laughs> Gosh, he, you know, I, I, this morning my, I spoke with my mom in Russia. And, you know, sometimes I worry about them. You know, they're over there. I'm here. And, and I, I'm just, every time I've, I'm talking to them, I'm encouraged. Because they, they're just talking about the Lord. They're just s s saying things by faith. And this is what we can do. And one thing she told me, you know, animals in this world, you know what? Animals never think about the future or the past. Have you ever thought about it? Animals, they don't think, they don't worry actually about the future and the past. They only live in the present moment. This is how God made them. They care about getting their meal and getting their rest, you know, and getting some, you know, a few other things. But most of the time, you know, God made them that way, that they are just live one day at a time. And they don't, like, live in worry of the future of the past. And I think in this way, Jesus is teaching us that we would trust Him and we would live in this, like, like uh, a life of faith from day to day, from day to day, and just leave all our needs, all our cares to Him. Okay, let's pray. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus, that we can, we can bring our emptiness to You. We can bring our weakness. We can bring our frailty, Lord. Thank you that there is no, there is absolutely no condemnation. That is, that is coming from your side. There is no blame. There is no fear from your side. Your kingdom is a kingdom of righteousness. Kingdom of joy and peace. Hallelujah. And whenever we are in fellowship with you, we experience that. Just that. Lord, we are praying this morning, just give us that wisdom that would help us to see and see the difference, see the spiritual world. So we would be filled with light. In Jesus' name we pray, Lord. We need that light to be shining brighter and brighter with each day. God, we just pray that you would fill our motivation, fill our heart with, des with desires from you. And when we are not motivated, that you would send motivation to us. Because we believe you are an all-powerful God. And you move, you move in this world on the heart which is open by faith. And Lord, may our hearts be like that, just open in faith to receive and contain you this divine spirit and may we say no when we need to say no to the things of this world like we sang this morning i will i will i will not bow to the things of the world i will not bow to them they're there but i'm not going to bow to them i will bow to the one who is with me in the fire in the storm Thank you, God. Thank you. You've proved yourself to be faithful and that you never leave or forsake your, your loved ones. 
And just we just pray for, for, for our church. We pray for our youth, Lord, that you would touch them and motivate them, that they would have a desires and, and dreams from you and the visions. Oh God, that there would be a heart of, of repentance of, and joy of going after you. We pray for that, Lord. We pray for our, for our students, for our college students, Lord. You bless them as they move on to study, Lord. We pray for, our, uh, uh, for Noah and Calvin and military, Lord. Bless them, Father. Just really touch them and, and lead them in their way, God. May just they see you before their eyes more than anything. And may, may they worship you when they're weak and, and when they need you the most. That they would worship you and not worship their, their problem. In Jesus' name we pray and bless, Lord, the rest of this day. In Jesus' name, amen.
this right. Just Lord Father God, the storms that are in our lives, Lord, they may be hard. They may be bigger than we can handle. But Lord, it is not us who needs to handle them. For all we need to do is trust in you, have hope in you, have you in our hearts. Put you first before anything else. God, you will take care of the rest. Just like when you calmed the storm before the disciples, when they were in fear. Lord, when we fear, when we tremble, let us come to you, O oh God. For you are stronger than any storm, or mightier than any storm that is in our lives. So let us have this faith that you are good, that you are for us, that you are mighty, powerful, and that if you are for us, then there is no one that can be against us. Jesus Christ. Thank you, Lord, and praise you. In Jesus' name, pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you guys for joining us this Sunday service. Um, there aren't any announcements for the near upcoming future, but near December, I'll be getting news about Bridge, which is the 